couple of years ago, 2006, there was a very, very profound book that came out called The Long Tail, which essentially, among many other facts and theories in the book, said the world we now live in is providing access points for people to create their own market or their own boutique. And I think this is the profound paradigm shift in especially classical music, because classical music has always been preoccupied with identifying a particular quadrant of the public that will buy or be interested in this recording or this performance, when in fact now our world of podcasts and video podcasts, I mean, let's not forget that in 2007 the word podcast was invented and accepted into the Webster Dictionary or something like this. It's an extraordinary fact. So we have the ability through the through through the digital media, which is exploding every week into a different form and getting more ubiquitous, more more simple, uh, both for people producing or or for better better. Uh, better expression, perhaps making permanent that which what they do, and those people accessing that and choosing to have that. It is extraordinary the kind of, 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 of research they're doing and finding, uh, in, in not just in iTunes, but all, all sorts of fields of how people access music, what kind of cross-genre uh, access people are building for themselves. And, and you would be surprised how many people that are very passionate about classical music are deeply involved in hip-hop. Uh, you would think jazz would be the, the natural associative, but it's, it's, it, it is extraordinary what kind of cross-genre uh, uh, associations we're finding in, in digital media. And even as I'm talking about it, I find myself speaking very much more about how people are accessing that which what I do rather than me being preoccupied trying to market something that I do to them. So I, I think this shift has been very fundamental and very profound and probably very positive. It, it is, has been very difficult for the classical industry, classical music industry. And, and that seems to make sense to me because we spend so much time identifying uh, in the classical musical world, identifying not just the best, the most complete and articulate way that music can say what it has to say. And that, in by definition, is somehow antagonistic to the ubiquitousness of, of the media world that we're, that we're building. And, and, and we're just at the beginning of this confrontation, and I think we'll find a way to, to ameliorate those issues, but I think it's a, a, f a, a very interesting uh, conflict. That's a very important question. Most people probably ingest their music as a background. Uh, in America, I know, and that was one of the geniuses of, of, of Apple and iTunes, and Steve Jobs specifically, you know, this astounding fact that most Americans, I think something like 40% of all music listening is done in the car. Uh, boom, what an idea. <laughs> uh, me personally, I, I enjoy background radio uh, of various genres. I am an audiophile, so I have a, a very serious sound system in a, in a room where I do like to go and close the doors and just and enjoy that moment either because it's technical proficiency as, a, as an electronic medium or because it's spectacular performance. Being a classical musician, I'm fascinated with how my colleagues, not just singers, but every musician, finds ways to express something else or something new or the same old, same old in classical music. So I'm, I'm, I'm always in dialogue with other musicians at least orally, if I can't be with them, and a lot of dead musicians as well. I've learned a lot from dead people on recordings. <laughs> We've become, in, in, in society now, so focused on that which we do, which is our life that we make and our professional or profession or how we pay for our rent or the working side, and then there's the other side. I mean, our lives have become sort of 
three pieces. There's the there's the the grind. There's the the period of non-grinding, and then there's the period of sleep, and and we're in continual negotiation for those for those pieces of pie. What becomes problematic is that that non-working time is now a time that is either a baseball game or the museum or or a concert or a film or a movie or TV or family or vacate you see whereas work has become sort of solidified into some sort of well that's what I go do to make this part of my life possible and I think this is a very very dangerous schizophrenia that we need to treat to me it's that's one of the great this is one of the great areas that arts and humanities and liberal arts education ameliorate they they it, it ingratiates that the working and the non-working time has a common third ground in there that is teaching one or the other, is amusing one or the other. I think one of the great things behind game theory or game, game development, especially in, in education now, apropos digital and, and new media, is finding a, an, a better, easier, more intuitive way to learn that takes that away from the the, the drudge and the, and the structured work part and puts it into the reflective, I'm alive, I'm a human being, I'm not working right now part. And I, I, think that, I think that I would like to see music and arts and humanities become more uh, able to, to even the, the color spectrum of the fan of activities. And is there a time, if that's really successful, is there a time where you just don't have any of that anymore? Maybe not, but your balance and your choices will be more healthy and more interesting. Is there a time when I just turn it off? Yes. I, there is a time when there's no music, uh, although there's rhythm, and I, and I find that in the golf course. Uh, although sometimes the rhythm that I need in my swing, as a musician, I find it in, a, in a, another melody, but I'm really stretching right now. There is a time when it's just, when it's just quiet. Uh, you might be interested to know that, that it is very difficult for musicians to read books with music in the background. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that <laughs> so much. Uh, I shouldn't speak for everybody, but it is, it is very difficult for me to do that. So I, I tend to, to separate my activities. Very comp I, I probably should, it would be an interesting dialogue with someone why that is. Um, because some music certainly is not important, and maybe maybe there is a certain I certainly just, I could turn on the radio, but then it's just distracting. Then it's just another noise element, which I don't particularly want. But when I hear music, I want to engage in it, um, even if I engage in it very quickly and turn it off in my mind. If I'm in an elevator, clearly I don't want to be dealing with that, um, even if it's Mozart. In fact, especially if it's Mozart, I, I don't think Mozart belongs in an elevator. I would like to see us return to to. To a to a, a a deeper, profound relationship to the experience in a concert hall, than just I think I'll go look at that. And I, I think that's part of the digital world I was speaking of earlier that I like very much. We we are building such wonderful access points that people have a deeper relationship to the music that is being played in the opera and in, in, the, in the concert halls or the recitals or the opera. Going to something because it's an amazing event and it's something you've never heard before, is part of it. And I don't take that away from anybody, but there's a, there, is a, there are many more rivers under, underneath that or wells underneath that river that you're, that you're participating in. It's, it's like going to the museum and seeing wonderful pictures that, that are startling and beautiful and Renaissance painting is, is an extraordinary world and you never need to know anything about it and you can go and, and gawk and wonder. Uh, and the sense of wonder is the most important part of all of it. But then, if you actually do take one of those little, you know, hearing things, or you do know something about the iconography of color, or the or the iconography of posture, or simply the iconography of the storytelling implied in Renaissance painting, then all of a sudden you have a completely different world that is ingratiating your imagination. It is making you a richer person, and you are participating in a much longer dialogue with historical perspective that enlightens your next steps in today's world. It's exactly the same thing in classical music, precisely the same thing. Mm -hmm.